Yeah, some great innovations for the Tiller Talk group. Just standing here with Mike um, from Gallagher, and he's going to give us an overview of um, how this uh, technology is working. Wire strainer, it's a glass filled nylon body, so getting away from the steel body, we're now reducing the arcing and tracking that we get associated with the standard ones, a bit of click clack and that going on. Um, 1.4 times stronger than your standard version, uh, aluminium spool. We've also integrated onto the side a joint clamp, which allows you to connect your wires in parallel and bring your lead in from your gate off to your activator. Um, Great for coastal areas because you won't get any corrosion with these products as well. Go to our website, you'll see a wee video there picking up a range of trucks, 742 kilos, lift from the from the back of it. So come and see us for the great innovation. Yeah, hi team, uh, Mike Ward from the Gallagher site at the National Field Days 2007 and just presenting some of our new innovations. And what I have here is our in inline post, it's a 16 mm fiberglass post with a polyethylene overmold. Uh, designed for riparian areas, waterways, steep cool country, basically rams in uh, nice and quick. This particular model's got 11 different wire spacings on it, which is attached with our clip system. Just a quick off with the clip, wire goes through there, clip on and click ground and you're done. Great for dairy farmers, great for all farmers and actual uh, organic dairy farmers. They're an alternative now, so this is a great product for them to use. So we're here with Richard Anderson from uh, Norwoods and we're looking at the new Avatar um, drill. I'm just wondering, uh, Richard, can you give us a bit of a summary um, on, this, on this piece of equipment? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Avatar from Bosch is a new uh, release from them. A direct drill for uh, the markets, various markets throughout uh, the world, but uh, we see it fitting in really well in the New Zealand market. Um, it comes at a 167mm row spacing. Um, available in four, six and eight metre widths. Um, you got a lot of options from um, just seed only, seed and fur, and a seed, um, seed, seed fur and fur, and also a small seed box as well. So there's um, some really good options. Um, minimal wearing parts in it, and um, certainly minimal uh, wearing parts as well. Some of the big things. So it's going to go quite well on um, free draining stony, stony yeah, soils? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, going to, it's going to suit um, quite a wide range of applications um, from the yeah, stony grounds, um, North Island grounds, where it's a little bit softer as well. Um, yeah, so. And we're talking um, DAP down, down the spout? Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Um, it can so a wide variation of rates from right down to a kilogram per hectare um, right up to really about 400 kilos per hectare. Yeah. Very good. And this the um, this is the drill here. What sort of width are we talking? Ah, uh, so this one here, six meters here. Um, and there's a, a wider option as well, six metre, and then there's a small one as well, four metre option as well. Brilliant. So yeah, a range a range of different options Absolutely. here. Yeah. Oh, thanks for your time, Richard. All right, so just we're reporting in for the field days. Uh, we've got some new innovations that helps. Um, I'm with Josh here this morning, uh, looking at clover and the importance of nutrients going to those clovers. So, what have we got here? Tom? Yeah, so what we've got here is uh, samples of clover uh, and showing the importance of potassium and molybdenum uh, in. in uh, our soils and how they promote clover growth. So at the front here we've got uh, clover showing, uh, getting, letting people get their hands dirty and try and find nodules on the clover roots and, uh, and showing the importance of those and how those are responsible for nitrogen fixation. As we move up the table we've got uh, healthy clover with, not, with both potassium and molybdenum present and at the back of the table we're showing how a deficiency or a lack of those two nutrients are quite detrimental to clover health. So uh, this yellowing over here is Josh, is this certain nutrient that's doing that or is it? Yeah absolutely, so in here we've got no potassium or moly, so um, very much responsible for the discoloration and, and lack of clover when you compare it to the healthy samples as well. Uh, so in fixation it's a free nutrient so we're really concentrating on that and uh, that's why it's so important. This is very exciting stuff, I mean legumes are often the thing that gets forgotten about the pasture, we always talk about grass but a good legume component is absolutely key so uh, it's uh, great to see you talking Yep, high quality feed, uh, don't forget it, you know, make it make the, it's a valuable component of the pasture so that's why we're concentrating on that from a nutrient perspective. Fantastic, thanks that Josh, very good. Perfect, cheers. Right, so now we've just moved across to Clayton um, from Balance to talk about some of the Spread Smart innovation here. So Clayton, you want to just give us a bit of a rundown on Spread Smart? So, so here at Balance and at Super Air, we want to be at the very forefront 
um, of farm efficiency. So Spread Smart is allowing our planes, which are buying fertiliser on farms at 240 kilometres an hour, to map out the areas we want the fertiliser, map out the areas we don't. The plane flies, the pilot flies the plane, and the computer controls the application. So the on off of the hopper, and the application around all the exclusion areas, the wetlands, the areas we don't want the food to go, is managed by the computer. So it's allowing our farmers to be very real, very accurate, and very straight up about where the fertiliser is going. They can show an application map again, it shows where it's gone, and it's safe for our pilots. It's our pilots just fly the plane. So it really is precision agriculture at 240 k's an hour. Precision agriculture at 240 k's an hour. So 6 metres a second, the computer's doing the box opening, the pilot just gets to fly the plane in and out of the valleys. Very quickly, we just thinking about where he's flying the plane. Uh, we want the computer to manage the precision for the farmer. At the end of the day, the farmer will get his map and show exactly where it's gone. Oh, it's good for you. That's fantastic, mate. Thanks for that wrap up. And Brilliant. Right, thanks, man. Thanks, sir. Yeah, good day, team. Uh, Hamish here, recording in from uh, Mystery Creek Field Days. Um, we've just yeah, come into the CRV uh, Embry tent. We've got Matt here, um, digital sales marketing manager. Uh, he's going to give us a very brief rundown around the uh, low end size and yeah, yeah, elaborate a bit. And yeah, sure. So hey, look, um, our, our genetic discovery that we've made with uh, low end size is uh, the executive summary is basically we can breed a cow that in 20 years' time the herd will have 20% less nitrogen. Um, excreted in the urine than they're currently doing. And uh, how we've done that is we've recognised that there is a link between milk urea nitrogen, which we can measure for and test through our herd test process, and there's a link between that and urinary nitrogen. So the last five years we've, we've tested uh, milk tested 650,000 individual milk tests, and that's given us all the information around milk urea nitrogen for those individual animals. With our database, we've been able to look at whose side those um, those animals, and from that work out if it was um, you know, if it was be able to be um, a, a trait that could be bred for. So it's some more work. Yes, it is a heritable trait. 0.22 is the number that it is, is heritable, which is a, a good number, which means that it can be bred. So we put together a team, uh, both for Frisians, uh, crossbred, and uh, Jersey, of course. And now we've got the team um, out there. There's a whole lot more research to do, field trials to do with um, Dairy NZ, which is happening, uh, uh, requesting money now, or funding for research. Um, probably in about another two or three seasons, they'll be able to produce a BV for milk urea nitrogen. Um, and as soon as that happens, we think that'll probably be more important than a BW number or breeding worth number um, in the industry moving forward. So it's been really successful for us already this year, so it's been a big thing. Exciting times for you guys. Yeah, it is, it is. So um, yeah, it's given us uh, a whole new, um, enabled us to have a different conversation with farmers um, and even here at Field Day we've had some huge inputs from uh, guys who we haven't dealt with before new customers coming and talking about it particularly in areas like Canterbury, Taupo, around and I right down Wellington where they're really really under the pump from an environmental perspective. We're looking to get ahead of the game so we don't have a BV for it yet, we think it's two years, but why not start now and uh, so when we do get it, you're ahead of the game and you can start running. Yeah, Roddy right so checking in with David from Ag First, just on these Wetter Irrigators um, and the Fluid Management Exciting. Yep. So what we've got here is a wetter travelling rain gun. So it's a, a high volume, low rate uh, travelling rain gun for air flow and application. Um, it can maintain travel speed everywhere it goes on the farm. We can get application depths from 1mm all the way up to 25mm and it's um, hydraulically driven. So we've gotten rid of a lot of the mechanics you find on a typical irrigator um, and you can get high capacity for it. Uh, GPF proof placement uh, with the harvest system, <coughs> um, pressure sensing, flow sensing, and automated um, uh, nutrient proof placement as well. So, a new innovation? Very new innovation, very exciting. Thanks yep. for that, mate. No problem. Cheers. Brilliant. Thanks.